please. So welcome today from wherever you're watching. We welcome you today. It's Inauguration Day it in these great mm -hmm. United States, and we are praying for our nation and for our world, and we are praying for uh, the new administration that's coming in. Mm -hmm. The Word of the Lord teaches us to do that. So let's just open with a word of prayer today. Father God, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for this day. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. amen. Well, I got a new song. It's a classic, but it's new to us. Uh, we didn't even practice it. We're just going to throw it on you Let's and see, see how you like it. It's called Let Me Walk With You, Jesus. I've been on the mountain with Jesus and I've been in the valley so low but not one time has he failed me when to him with my burdens I go so let me walk with you, Jesus. Don't ever leave me alone. For without you I could never, no, never make heaven my home. Welcome today. It's January 20th. 20th. Believe it or not, it's mm -hmm. January 20th, 2021. Yeah. I hope that you've not broken all your New Year's resolutions yet. <laughs> I hope that some of them are still intact and mm -hmm. that you're on your good and healthy eating plans, that you're good on <laughs> that you're on your good and healthy reading yes. plans, so eating and reading eating, so reading, important. Eating, eating the word of God, bread of life. Absolutely. 
That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, I am the bread of heaven come down to you. So we're on Zoom and we're on Facebook Live today. And we're going to jump right into the word of the Lord today. We're going to look at three portions of scripture today that we are camped out in as a ministry. And the first one is going to be Genesis uh, chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. We're also going to look at Hebrews chapter 11. Mm -hmm. And we're going to look at Matthew 24. Mm -hmm. And in Brown Bag Bible Study, what we do is we take the Sunday morning message, whatever series we're on, and then we begin to unwrap it a little bit more and a little bit more so that we keep the ministry on a consistent growth track of learning and understanding. Mm -hmm. And we're asking all of the families and individuals that are connected with us as a ministry through Grace and through SoCal Connect and our various missions around the world that we support, Macedonia, Bulgaria, Serbia, Croatia, Kosovo, mm -hmm. Jamaica, Mexico, various areas in Africa, wherever you're at, and if you're connected to this ministry, even the Ukraine and now Pakistan, yeah. we are reaching with this mm -hmm. global technology Amen. through you, Zoom and Facebook and other upcoming platforms that we'll be utilizing. So right. we're turning to Genesis chapter 6. And we're going to read one verse of scripture and that, uh, I'm sorry, uh, we're going to read verses 9 and 10. Genesis chapter 6, and we're going to read two verses of scripture, 9 and 10. And I'm reading to you out of the New International Version. It says this, this is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. I'm going to read those verses again. This is the account, I want you to remember that word account, of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and roast beef. Amen. All right. Now, <laughs> now we're going to look at um, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 7. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 7. Uh, there we go. All right, I hope you're there. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with his faith. A couple of things I want to point out there. Holy fear and the word condemned. The word condemned. And we're going to we're going to look at that in just a little bit. Now I want to read you that same verse of Scripture in the Message Bible. Now, I need you to know this. The Message Bible is not a translation of Scripture. It is a paraphrase of Scripture, which means that when we are studying the Word, we should never just study the Message Bible in itself because it's a paraphrase. So we use the Message Bible... As an, as an accompaniment to our study Bibles, which is King James Version, New International Version, New Living Translation. Those are actual translations of Scripture, not a paraphrase of Scripture. So the Message Bible puts things um, in more uh, of a daily language. And here it is, Hebrews eleven seven 7, in the Message. By faith Noah built a ship, in the middle of dry land. He was warned about something he couldn't see and acted on what he was told. Very, very important. The result, his family was saved. His act of faith drew a sharp line 
between the evil of the unbelieving world and the rightness of the believing world. As a result, Noah became intimate with God. Noah became intimate with God. And finally, our, our other verse will be in Matthew 24. Matthew 24 and beginning with verse 35. Matthew 24 and verse 35. Why do we look uh, more in depth in Brown Bag Bible Study? Because it's actually a Bible study. Mm -hmm. We are delving in deeper, sinking our teeth into the meat and potatoes of the Word of God. So Matthew chapter 24 and beginning with verse 35. Now, if you have a red letter Bible like I do, your letters are going to be in red here because these are the actual recorded words of Jesus, the actual spoken words of Jesus. Verse 35, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Amen. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Check this out. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be it at the coming of the Son of Man. <coughs> For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. I need you to catch verse 39 very, very securely. <coughs> and they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. I'm going to read that again. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. All right. So we're going to dig deeply into the Word of God Regarding the story of Noah, and our topic for today is this. This is the account. Mm. This is the account. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, as we dig into the word today, may our spirits be filled with life. Yes, Lord. May questions come up in us, Lord, that helps us to seek more of what God is doing, mm -hmm. what God wants to do, and especially what God will do in our lives, mm -hmm. especially in this year of 2021. Yes. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Cheers. Cheers. Feel free to have your lunch if you like. <laughs> yeah. We have some chicken soup on the stove. And it smells wonderful, it so I probably won't be long-winded. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we looked at three portions of Scripture today in particular regarding Noah and his family. Right. This man, Noah, and his family. And here's the, the first Scripture that we read, Genesis 6, verse 9. This is the account of Noah and his family. Mm -hmm. Noah and his family. So the account recorded in Scripture is not simply one of just one lone ranger, one man on his own, one individual, right. but a man and his family, mm -hmm. a leader of his family. Yes. And Noah and his family um, constituted a complete unit, a team, we could say. Mm -hmm. I, I love the acronym of TEAM. T-E-A-M. Together, everyone achieves more. Right. Let me just say this at the beginning of this Bible study. Noah and his family were a team. God wants you and your family to be a team. Yes, he, he does. He wants you to work together because yeah. together, everyone achieves more. Yes. So God doesn't want a family that's hither and there and yawn and you know, all everybody on different pages. We are all individuals. Mm -hmm. We all have individual thumbprints, fingerprints. We are created with our, our own strand of DNA. All of those things. We have, right. we have physical characteristics that are completely um, original with us. Mm -hmm. We're part of the human race. We're part of the human family. We all come out of Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. 
We're all created in the image and the likeness of God, but we're all individuals. Right. But God does not create the world to live in ecosystems individual of every other ecosystem. God creates us to be living organisms in specific ecosystems. And the family unit is an ecosystem that works together among other ecosystems. And our cultures that we create, the traditions that we um, employ in our lives, those are all part of together everyone achieving more, mm -hmm. creating a family unit. And we have a, a spectacular example in Noah and his family of teamwork. Right. I, I've never been more in love with the story of Noah and his family as I am right now at the beginning of 2021. God has just helped me to fall in love with the Christian family through the example and the beautiful tapestry of Noah and his family. So it's important that we know this was not just about one guy, but one guy and those that were connected to him. Right. Now, I want to give you this quote. I, I used this quote in, on Sunday morning, and it comes from Bishop Tudor Bismarck, uh, Bishop uh, from Harare, Zimbabwe. And here's what he said. People are only as powerful as the quality of the word they are receiving. People are only as powerful as the quality of the word they are receiving. Right. So the quality of the people depends on the quality of the word they are receiving. So power and quality are, or we could say authority, is connected to the quality of the content we are receiving in our lives. This is why it's so important that we understand this principle of life. What I'm watching, what I'm listening to, and what I'm reading is contributing either to my construction or to my destruction. True. What I'm watching, reading, and listening to is contributing to whether I'm being built up as a person mm -hmm. in my spiritual life, my physical life, my emotional and mental life, my relational health, my financial life, all of those areas, what I'm reading, listening to, and watching is, is contributing to the quality or the lack of quality in my life. Mm -hmm. I have a goal for 2021. Maybe you'll join me in that goal. It's to read 21 books in 2021. That's about an average of a book and a half per month. Is that right? A little more. A little more than, two, yeah, almost two books yeah. per month. And I'm reading two books right now, The Art of Holding Space and The Art of War. Those are the two books that I'm ingesting right now. They've really captured my interest, and they're kind of on different planes, but there's some threads of commonality there. Uh, when I said that to my assistant pastor, Ben Cheeseman, he said, I'll take you up on that on that uh, challenge, Pastor G. I said, great, Ben. He said, I'm going to start with the Dr. Seuss books, like <laughs> Cat in a Hat. I said, baby, whatever you choose, man, just join me and read right along with me. When I was in Kosovo years ago, my son was with me, and our pastor from Macedonia was with us. And we walked into the International Christian Church in Pristina, Kosovo, pastored by our good friend, Pastor Arthur Krasnici. And he had all these tables loaded with books in the lobby. And our pastor said, Pastor Arthur, what's the deal with all these books? He said, we're giving them away. They're all free. Really? He said, do you have a box that I can have? I'd like to have a bunch of these books. And so Pastor Dragan loaded up all these books and put them out in the vehicle. And he said, why are you giving away these books? And here's what Pastor Arthur said. I'll never forget it. He said, we're trying to get our people to start reading the Bible. Ouch, ouch, yeah. ouch. Many times Christian believers can be interested in a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. But really the main interest we should have, or a main interest, interest, interest we should have, is reading God's Word. Yes. So I want to encourage you today. PJ and I are going to do absolutely everything that we can 
to raise the quality of your life by offering you quality content based on the Word of God. Amen. Now, it's up to you to receive it. Right. Like this program right now. Somebody could just turn us off and say, ah, I'm going to go to something else. Right. And if the Word of God is coming to you, and it's a good quality Word, with a lot of good nuggets and meat and potatoes in there for you, mm -hmm. then it's up to you whether you're going to receive it. And if you receive it, you read it, you listen to it, you watch it, I can guarantee you the quality of your life is going to be on the rise in your life. Amen. So, let's look at this verse of Scripture. This is the account of Noah and his family. I went to good old Merriam-Webster, and I said, what does Merriam-Webster have to say to us about this word account? And here's what he said. It's a description of facts, conditions, or events. It's a report or a narrative. A description of facts, conditions, or events. A report or a narrative. So when the Word of God says to us, here is the account of this godly, righteous man, Noah, and his family, what it's going to tell us is a description of the facts about this family unit. Mm -hmm. The conditions of this family unit. And those conditions could be the culture that they had as a family, the traditions that they held dear as a family, also the conditions that this family unit were in, right. was in. It's a report about this family. It's a narrative about this family. Mm -hmm. So I just want you to put on your thinking caps right now and begin to think, what does the description of facts concerning me as a believer and my family report? What is the narrative of our story? What does it say to God? What does it say to my fellow believers? What does it say to the unbelieving world? Because I can guarantee you, each and every one of us, at some point in our life, whether today or on the day of judgment, each and every one of us are going to give an account to God, right. are going to give an account mm -hmm. to our fellow believers, mm -hmm. are going to give an account to the unbelieving world. Right. The Apostle Paul said it like this in the New Testament, BJ. He said, Christian believers are little books being known and read of all people. Mm -hmm. How is your book reading today? in testimony of your walk with God, your relationship with God. So let's break this down. The account reported in the scripture, the account that the family had of one another, and especially in contrast to the unbelieving world, what kind of effect did it have in that day and age? I'm glad you asked that question. Now we'll answer it. In Hebrews eleven seven, we read, When Noah was warned by God of things that had not yet come. This was a prophetic foretelling of the future. And you find that in Genesis chapter 6, when the Bible says that God looked over the earth and the entire earth was only evil continuously. The thoughts and the processes of men and women's uh, uh, minds and behaviors was only evil continuously. And the Bible says that God regretted that he ever created humankind. I got to tell you, that has a very, very heavy impact on my life because I think I don't ever want to break God's heart. Mm -hmm. I don't ever want God to be disappointed with me. Mm -hmm. I, hey. I'm as, I'm as <laughs> imperfect as the next guy. Right. And I can guarantee you, sometimes my guardian angel probably looks like this. <laughs> That's probably what my guardian angel looks I think like sometimes. guardian angel's too busy to have any time <laughs> to even do that. Well, that could be, PJ. You know me better than anybody else. There you go. 
But that's where humanity had fallen. Humankind had fallen to the point where God said, I'm just sick of this. Mm. I'm disgusted with it, and I'm going to kill them all. Mm. And he found one righteous man, yes, one man. righteous guy, and that guy had a family. Mm -hmm. What could be better than that? Which lets me know there was a whole lot of unrighteous mm -hmm. Guys and gals out there, and not and families not leading their family in the ways of righteousness, and the yeah. Bible says Noah found grace. Mm -hmm. Noah found favor in the eyes of God. Yes, he did. And God said, Noah, I'm going to share something with you. I'm going to kill everybody. Mm -hmm. I'm going to kill every animal, every human being, every plant. And I'm going to destroy it with a great flood. It had never happened before. So mm -hmm. jump back over to Hebrews 11, 7. When Noah was warned of things not yet to come, the Bible says he was moved by holy fear. We taught on that last Wednesday. Yeah. There's a difference between holy fear that moves believers in the direction of God to align themselves to the plan of God to the will of God, to the agenda of God. And there are those that are moved by unholy fear and they move in the opposite direction of God. Right. One of my friends who was in jail ministry for a long time, he said, a lot of people go looking for God like the criminal goes looking for the policeman. Oh, yeah, that's true. They're going in the opposite direction. <laughs> so true. when the people of God have received a word from God, like Noah, Noah, there's impending judgment, but I'm going to build a covenant with you. I want your family saved. I want your family preserved. Noah moved to action with this holy fear. And what did he do? He built an ark. Yeah. He built an entity of safety for his family. Now, there's two points of salvation there. There was the point of being saved from the great flood, but there was also the point of being safe during this great storm. Mm. And it wasn't just from the water outside. I, I love what somebody posted on social media one time. It's not the water outside the boat that'll sink a vessel. Mm -hmm. It's the water that gets in the vessel. That's good. Like so that. Noah wanted his family safe mm -hmm. during the storm, during that time that they would be locked up quarantined, locked down in that ark. Now, they had to be safe from the storm, and they had to be safe from all of these animals that perhaps they had never interacted Ooh, with before. That's true. Think about that. And when God gave the plan for the ark to Noah, he said, I want it to be this long, this wide, this high, I wanted to have individual rooms in it. I wanted to have a roof. I wanted to have one window, and I wanted to have one door. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says that Noah did everything just as God instructed him. And that is what made Noah's family safe. And yeah. that is what saved his family from all of that destruction. Is this making sense today? I hope it is, because this is the account of Noah and his family. This is the description of facts. These are the conditions. These are the events. This is the report, the narrative of a godly man, or we could say a Christian believer and his family. Now, what were the conditions of Noah's family? They were a team. And we see that because God is speaking to Noah and his family. This is the account of Noah and his family, which had Mrs. Noah, which had him, Shem, and Japheth, mm -hmm. and their three wives. So it was a family working together. Now, um, after some research, it looks, it appears that it took them 55 to 75 years to build this ark. Now, that was just a small percentage of Noah's overall life picture because the Bible records that Noah was 600 years old when he went into the ark. 
He was 601 when he came out. So 55 to 75 years is just a snapshot, a snippet of his over 600 years. Now, why is that important to know today? Because today, we don't have 600 years. Right. We don't have 600 years to build a lifetime of safety that our family will be safe from the struggles of life, mm -hmm. safe from the things they're interacting with that they've never experienced before, right. and ultimately saved from all destruction and judgment of God. Right. What we do have, hopefully, is this window of 55 to 75 years in our modern day terms. Because that's probably the average life that people are living. Somewhere between 55 to 75 years. So we have to be wise enough, understanding enough, insightful enough to realize that God is sending judgment on the earth. And we need our family saved. At the end of the day, after everything that G and PJ have done in life and ministry, I'm hoping that George, Jill, Elisha, Susie, and Robbie are saved. Yes. That we make it through those pearly gates mm -hmm. and that we spend forever of eternity in the presence of God. Amen. We also want those people safe and saved during the trials and the circumstances of life. I hope this is whetting your appetite and appealing to you for your family today because this is the account. Now, let's talk about this word condemned that we read in the NIV and this clear line paraphrased in the Message Bible. I love this. The Bible says that when Noah was warned by God of things not yet happened, Things not yet seen. He moved in holy fear and he built this ark out in the middle of dry land. And then the Bible says because of his faith, in other words, his trust, his reliance, his belief in God, that God could be trusted with what he was saying, that God was worthy to be honored with, this, with his obedience, he condemned the rest of the unbelieving world. Now, I need to unpack that word because condemnation is not anything that is of God. Mm -hmm. So you need to understand this word. Noah was not looking down his long nose of judgment and condemnation at the unbelieving mm -hmm. world saying, I'm righteous. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm better than you because I'm walking with God. I'm hearing from God and I'm obeying God. That's not, that's not what Noah's... Um, attitude was and that right. should never be our attitude as christian believers right. i remember one time a lady walked into our church that was attending our church at the time and she was appalled because there were some cigarette butts on the front steps of the church and she said do you know that people are out there smoking and then coming into church and they left their cigarette butts on the front steps and i said um well i hope i hope that's the case I like that. That appeals to me. What would appeal to you? We don't want people here smoking. What if people walk by, drive by and see people smoking, lighting up on the front steps of the church? I said, I would think that would say, this is a place where anybody's welcome. Mm -hmm. I said, by the way, did you take the broom and sweep up the <laughs> cigarette? But she didn't think that was funny at all. What am I saying? I'm saying that God's open invitation god's door is open come and be saved come and be healed come and come into relationship with god come into rela relationship with a christian family that we're pulling together in the same direction that people will be saved that people will come into the knowledge of god and their lives would be better yes. noah's faith condemned the unbelieving world, because it did this. It drew a clear line of distinction between those who are going to hear God mm -hmm. and believe God and take God at his word and be moved to action with a holy fear right. and not be disobedient. Mm -hmm. So Noah didn't condemn the world in terms of his attitude. His actions 
condemn the world because they were watching Noah build this ark. They were watching a believing family work together as a team, headed in the same direction. I guarantee you, Noah's family was the most ridiculed, misunderstood, misconstrued family unit in that entire generation. Right. So your faith, your actions that you take, should look different than the unbelieving world. Mm -hmm. We should be salmon going upstream in a downstream world. That's true. Think about that. Our actions should look different, different. than the actions of the unbelieving world. Yes. Why? Because we take God at his word. We believe God's word. We trust in him. That he has our very, very best in his heart for us. Yes, amen. Now, those are the conditions. Let me talk about this last condition here. And that was that the Bible says in Matthew 24, we read it, that everyone around Noah did not know what was happening until the flood came and took them all away. Just think about that. They did not know what was happening mm -hmm. until the flood came and took them away. Right. I ask you the question today. How in the world could a righteous family be building an ark out in the middle of dry land, building something that had never been done before? Based on a word from God that God was sending judgment, but I want your family preserved. Mm -hmm. Everybody watch this. How could they not know anything about this until the flood came upon them and it was too late? I would suggest to you that they were so self-absorbed, so self-centered, so zero focused in on meeting their own wants and desires and needs mm -hmm. and the need for self-gratification that God and the things of God and even the example of a godly family meant nothing to them until it was too late. Mm -hmm. Perhaps the wheels of your brain are, are clicking right now on people that you know that perhaps are in that situation. They're so self-centered, they're so self-absorbed, they're so uh, focused on anything else that God means nothing to them. Right. Church attendance means nothing. Reading the word daily, praying, worshiping, mm -hmm. seeking God, being moved by holy fear. None of those things are top shelf priorities in their life, but I hope that today, through the richness of this word, through the quality of this word, the power of your inner person is strengthened today. Yes. The amen. authority that you have as a believer to hear from God, and you might say, Pastor G, I don't hear from God. Let me say this. Jesus said in John chapter 10, my sheep know my voice. Right. And they will never follow the stranger. They'll run from the stranger. The stranger is the thief that Jesus said in John 10.10. 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you would have abundant life. So if you are a lamb of God, if you're in relationship with God, <laughs> you should be hearing from God. You should be honing your ear, um, sharpening your skill to hear from God. And God speaks in three ways generally. From his word, God hopefully is speaking to us from his word right now. God speaks through nature. The Bible says that the heavens declare the glory of God. Yes. And the earth shows forth his handiwork. Yes. And God speaks through people. I hope that God is tugging at your heart today through the teaching of the word of God. We want to raise the quality of your life. We want to build up quality people in this ministry. People right. that are not fearful, confused, doubtful, mm -hmm. full of worry and the cares of life. But we know what to do with all of those. And we know where to go with all of those. Yes. 
So this is going to conclude the teaching today based on Genesis 6, 9, Hebrews 11, 7, and Matthew 24. This is the account of Noah and his family. And here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to read those verses of Scripture that we've given out today and ask the Lord. Just stop and ask the Lord, Lord, what is it that you want to show me from these verses that we're studying together as a ministry? What is it that you want to show me? Is there something that you need to warn me about? Is there something that you want to comfort me about? Because let me say this to you. Noah and his family were never in this situation before. And it all started one day when God said, Hey, I'm going to spring this one on you. I'm going to take out this earth. Now granted, they had 55 to 75 years. On the other hand, you and I don't have... Um, we may not have 55 to 75 years. We're going to have to hear from God and move with yes. action. PJ, can you wrap this up for us today? Yes, well, we're so glad that you joined us on Facebook Live, on Zoom, and later on YouTube for this really impacting word from God. And we thank the Lord for his example of Noah and his family that even condemn us in many ways when we think about it and not ouch in a, wow not in you're a right. bad way but in a way to build us up to yes. show us what this family can look like what our lives can look like how dedication and commitment and perseverance no matter what can look like and so when we think about this family building this giant heavy ship in the middle of dry ground nowhere near the water how would they have ever gotten it to water if the lord hadn't brought the water to them and so his hand is miraculous he knows the end from the beginning and he had a plan for noah and he has a plan for you too yeah baby doll let me just interject this here at the end all noah and his family knew was 47 days the lord said i'm going to send rain on the earth for 40 days mm -hmm. And then seven days before the flood, God said, Noah, you and your family go into the ark. Before the rain started. Before yeah. the rain so started. Seven plus 40. So there was seven plus 40. Yeah. That's all they knew. They had no idea they were going to spend up to one year in that ship. Mm -hmm. God, I think most times, does not say, okay... Here's the 40-year plan for you. And you can dissect it down and chunk it out and digest it. God gives a word and then he depends upon us mm -hmm. with his wisdom and insight to get it figured out and put it into play. Yes. All right. And we invite you to, um, to like and subscribe to our youtube channel we're going to be loading this up to there in a little bit it's grace christian church with pastor g and pj grace christian church with pastor g the and sign pj yep. and pj yep right we'll put a link up in the heading of this yep so we're going to sign off now on facebook and we're going to spend some time with our good folks here on zoom and process and talk and enjoy some fellowship yes. god bless, god bless you. you we love you day. have a great day